In the last section, we got to green, indicating a passing test suite for our newly extended palindrome method. Let's take a look. Here we go. Now it's passing, but the code we used was as straightforward as possible. Didn't matter how we got to green as long as we got there. In this section, we're going to make the code beautiful. We're going to change the form of the code without changing its function, a practice known as refactoring. Here it is. This is the letters method right here. So let's take a look at this. How can this be improved? If you recall our work on functional programming, you may have a hint about where we're going with this. But let's start off with the simplest possible improvements. First of all, we notice that there's some duplication. Self of i is being called twice. So let's factor this into a variable. Let's call it character. And then we can say if character.match push the character onto letters. You can see we've already improved this. It's already easier to read. All right, still green. Something else we can do is factor this regex into a separate variable. Let's call it letter regex. And we can define it up here. All right, still green. All right, next let's take a look at this for loop. As we've discussed, for loops really aren't very often used in Ruby. Instead, it's better to use each. So how are we going to iterate through every character in this string? Well, you may recall from a previous section that there's a method called cars, or chars, or cares, or chairs, on strings, in any case spelled C-H-A-R-S, and that returns all the characters. So we can do this, self dot, I'd like to say cars for some reason, chars, self dot chars dot each do character. You can see you can just reuse the name. Then we can get rid of this line, see if that works. All right, still green. There's one other change we can make that I consider to be a slight improvement, and that is to use case insensitive regex matching. This is perfectly correct here, but I really think of this as being matching on A through Z case insensitively. We can see from the Rubular quick reference that the way to do that is with I. So we can put an I here. The way it works is you put it at the end of the slash and then just get rid of this. All right, still passing. Well, this is already a significant improvement. It's easier to read. We have less duplication. We're doing a very Ruby style iteration using each. But if you look at this, as I hinted at before, it matches a pattern we've seen before. We've got an initial array, and then we're pushing to it based on the Boolean criterion. That's exactly what select does. Let's review that in the REPL. I'm going to copy this string here from our test. So here's our string called the chars method. There we go. We can see that it's an array of all the characters. And now we can select them based on whether they match the regex. Dot select. And for these one-line blocks, I like to use shorter variable names so you can fit more on the line. Let's just call the character C. And we'll select the characters that match A through Z case insensitively. Look at that. All we need to do is join it, and those are the letters. So we can take this and replace all of this stuff with self 
dot chars dot select c dot match a through z case insensitively dot join. It's a single line. And it's still passing, which means this code still works. That's the kind of refactoring I would be terrified to do without a test. But because there is a test, any sort of error will get caught right away. Get rid of the case insensitive. Boom, failing test. Accidentally leave off the join. Boom, failing test. We can even make this a little shorter. I mentioned before a couple times that we can do this, get rid of the self dot. That's working. So this is really amazing. It's so powerful to be able to catch these errors right away. We can do these very intricate kind of code manipulations, secure in the knowledge that any errors we introduce will be caught right away. Now in a lot of languages, we would have to stop here. This is about as elegant and compact as this code can get. But in Ruby, there's an even better way to do this, in my opinion. You may recall that there's a way to do pattern matching right in a string, to pull out all of the things in a string that match a particular regex as an array. It's called scan. We have a string dot scan, a through z case insensitively. Look at that. Those are exactly the characters we want. It's just the letters without anything else. So we can do this. And that's the same as the letters method. But because it's so compact, we can put it right in process content. Get rid of letters. Get rid of the letters test. We still have this test to catch any regressions. And there we go, still green. All right, we now have a working Ruby gem, but how do we use it? Well, we're going to publish it, but we can test it locally first, like this. We can do bundle exec rake install. We can then require it in the REPL. So that should have added the palindrome question mark method to strings. It's false. That's true. And that's true as well. So we now have a way to detect palindromes by calling palindrome question mark right on strings. The way to publish the gem is to use another rake command. Let's look at our status first. Got a lot of stuff here. Let's add it. We finished a working and refactored palindrome method. If you haven't yet set up a remote repository, you should do that now. The release process actually tries to push, so you'll get an error if it's not set up. So after doing a git push, we're now ready to release the gem, and the way to do that is with bundle exec rake release. Now I actually got an error here, and this is amazing. There's actually been a change in the way Bundler creates a gem 
since I finished the draft of the book and before I started this video series. So let's take a look. This is real life development here. Here's the gem spec. This here is new. It says prevent pushing this gem to rubygems.org to allow pushes, either set the allowed push host to allow pushing or delete this section to allow pushing to any host. Well, we're going to push to Ruby gems. So let's just add this in. Let's add rubygems.org. Let's see if that works. And there we go. All we need to do now is wait a little bit of time while RubyGems processes the push. That gives me a chance to talk a little bit about this version here. By default, the code generated by Bundler starts at version 0.1.0. .0. This leading zero indicates that this is beta software, or maybe even alpha software, which is to say it could change unpredictably. It's not really ready for users. Use at your own risk. If we make a minor change to the code, we change this one to a two. So we would make a new release called 0.2.0, .0, and that gets changed here. This is where you indicate the version. And when we're ready to have outside users, we would indicate that by changing this to version 1.0.0. .0. This third number is for really small changes, and you can see the text for details on the difference between the first, second, and third numbers. This practice of versioning is called semantic versioning, also known as SEMVER for short. And there's a link in the text to a SEMVER website with more details on all of this stuff. All right, let's see if that worked. I'm going to try installing the exact version number here. Gem install. mhartle video. Palindrome dash V zero point one point zero. Let's see if that worked. Successfully installed. All right, you know what? I'm going to uninstall it because I installed it locally. This is a good thing to do usually just to make sure that it's really coming from where I think it's coming from. All right, so. Let's test it in IRB. Require the gem apple.palindrome is false. What about this? A man, a plan, a canal, Panama. That is a palindrome. So this is working great, but on the other hand, we can't tell if an integer is a palindrome or not. So as a special bonus for screencast watchers, I'm going to solve the exercise to restore the module version. It'll look like this. Take a look at this here. So this is actually mhartle video palindrome. We want a module. And then take this stuff in here. And then class string will just include the module. All right, let's see if that worked. All right, still passing. So that was a nice refactoring. That was actually pretty tricky. We refactored into a module. That's exactly the kind of thing that could have broken something, but it didn't. All right, now let's add palindrome to integer. 
we'll use TDD, get to red. We'll test an integer palindrome. Save that. It's failing as required. Let's add it to class integer. What's going to happen here? Still failing. And the reason, as we can see here, is that there's no method scan for integer. That's true. So let's do 2s. This still won't work. See if you can figure out why. Oh, that did work, but it worked for the wrong reason. And in fact, this is a good example of why it's important to have a negative test, too. Test integer non palindrome. So this is not a palindrome. So this should be refute. Now it's failing as required. So what happened there is because we're scanning on A through Z, when we scanned 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's not pulling out anything. It's just the empty string, which in fact is equal to its own reverse. That's arguably a bug in our palindrome detector. And in fact, we'll deal with that in chapter 10. But for now, in order to get this to pass, we have to add digits to the regular expression. We saw this before with our zip code example in the regex section. The way to detect a digit is simply backslash D. So now this is going to match A through Z and backslash D. See if that works. Got it. All right, so this is a green test suite. We can now detect both string and integer palindromes and we're ready to deploy a new version. This is how you do it, it's very simple. Just do this, just bump the version number like that. Okay, and then the same thing. And there we go. At this point, once RubyGems is done processing the release, anyone who installs the gem or who updates the gem will get the new version. There we go. All right, it's working. Well, congratulations on publishing your first Ruby gem. This brings us to the end of our introduction to testing and test-driven development. We're not quite done testing, though. We'll actually be testing the web application in Chapter 10. But first, we're going to learn more about writing shell scripts in Ruby.